welcome to Fagin. Today we are going to review every line of miniature paint in the world. Well, or the 10 that I have. But I got a lot of paint, so it's going to be great. All right, here's a look at all the brands of paint we're going to be reviewing today. We have Citadel, Vallejo, Scale 75, Pro Acryl, War Colors, Chimera, P3, Reaper, Dollar Rowney, Scale Color Artist, and Obtolung 502. And we're going to be judging them based on the bottle, range of colors, opacity, flow, pigment and thinning, finish, additional types, functionality, and bonus attributes. And I'm going to tell you at the end of the video... Which line of paint is the best in the world? And which ones you can throw in the garbage? Because if you don't own the best, you're just like the rest. Let me try it again. If you don't own the best, then your life is a mess. No, 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 that's not good. If you don't own the best... Then you're just a pest. No, that's not good either. I don't know. They're all good, I mean, but some are better than others, right? All right, so Citadel Paint is first. Citadel Paint comes in a pot as opposed to a dropper that you'll see in a lot of other brands. Uh, I think the idea with it is that you can open the the pot and you'll see all this paint gathering around this lip that they build inside of this pot. I think you're meant to paint directly from the lip onto your model, so you'll basically scoop the paint out of here with the brush and apply it directly to the model. In theory, this sounds like it might be convenient, but in practice, it's actually kind of a pain in the butt because you can't really thin your paint that way unless you put it on a palette. And you're going to have a hard time, well, first and foremost, getting it open. I'm always a little nervous that paint's going to spray everywhere when I open it. And then I also have difficulty actually closing this, these pots after I'm done opening them. It's almost like a, a Tupperware or something. You have to go all the way around the edge and make sure that you have a good seal. So kind of tedious to use here. It's also really hard to get actually get the paint out you pretty much have to use your brush and scoop it like a shovel and uh, put it on a palette to thin it but you're not going to be able to get an exact ratio measurement like you would with a dropper so the idea of one or two drops of paint is basically foreign to this pot unless you use a pipette you're gonna have a hard time exactly measuring how much paint you've pulled out of here so the paint pot from Citadel is going to get a low score. As far as the line goes, there's actually a lot of good colors here. You're going to see a lot of the things that you see on Games Workshop box art um, across the range. So high marks there. Another thing worth noting is that they do offer base and layer consistencies for their paint. So depending on what you're actually doing, you can pick up paint specifically tailored to the task at hand, whether it's uh, layering or basing. Okay, so as far as opacity goes from Citadel, it's not the best amongst all the paints that I'm looking at today. Also not the worst. It's really kind of middle of the pack. Um, you're obviously going to get more opacity out of the base paint than you will the layer paints, but you're still probably going to have to put multiple coats down in order to get good coverage with some of the more challenging colors. So nothing to write home about there. All right, now to talk about flow. So I have a little bit of thinner medium on my brush here. I will be using a combination of thinner medium and water to put these paints through their paces today. Um, so a note on flow with Citadel. The medium that comes in the paint feels a little bit chunky to me. And it almost hurts its ability to flow as I try to get it off my brush here. You'll see brush strokes are pretty apparent and kind of difficult to avoid without a good recipe of, of thinner plus water, which kind of goes against the sort of aimed at beginner feel that I kind of get from the marketing of this paint. Now, there are a lot of professional painters who do wonderful things with it, but... It's just a little bit difficult to get smooth flow right out of the gate with this paint. You really do need to figure out a bit of a magic combination of thinning medium in order to get it to flow kind of the way that I would want it to. 
All right, so next on to pigmentation and thinning. The pigment quantity in this paint is a little bit weak. You can see now I have some water on my brush, how the pigment tends to pool up a little as I pull it out, and it kind of comes out a little spotty. Part of that is because I'm here, again, using water. If I have more thinning medium in my paint, then the structure of the medium will kind of hold the pigment up a little bit better. But with really heavily pigmented paint, you don't really have to fight against that as much. Uh, here again, you can see there's spots where the pigment kind of gets chunky, and now my brush strokes are uh, fairly evident down there at the bottom. So, Finish for the most part of this paint is fairly matte. Some individual colors within the line are more satin than others, so... There's a little bit of variety here as far as how the finish is going to go. Uh, for the most part, it's light satin to light matte finish. So next is additional types. This is going to be a real strong point for Citadel. So they have a line of what's called technical paints where they solve such painting needs as blood and corrosion another thing that they offer. Also a Nilic Oxide and Nurgle's Rot which can basically serve to achieve any sort of special effect that you might need. So here's Blood for the Blood God. Really quality products as far as their technical line. This stuff looks almost indistinguishable from actual human blood. I bet if I cut myself and put it down on the on the palette right now, you'd have a hard time telling which is which. It's really quite remarkable stuff, and it's going to dry glossy, so the scientists at Citadel have sort of preserved the attributes in the paint that you would actually see in their real-life counterparts. So it's pretty remarkable, some of the effects you can get. So here's that Nurgle's Rot underneath. That's going to be a sort of a glossy, boogery, gooey film that you can put over open wounds, um, a.k.a. most of your Nurgle model, and it's very effective for making a wound look like a sore, an open sore. Here's some of that Nilic Oxide, basically trying to replicate the patina that you might find on uh, rust or bronze. This is going to have a almost chalky finish, which is kind of what you want since that sort of patina is actually going to be physically sitting on the surface of a metal. So, like I said, the attributes of the paint support the type of product that it is. So, in that regard, uh, they're very effective, and Nilic Oxide's a, a good one as well. So, last but not least here among the technical line... So this next one is Typhus Corrosion. This is going to sort of simulate like a corroded bit of rusty, metally, oily, slicky goo that might pool up in the recesses of some big metal container or sort of in the wheel wells of a big tank or vehicle. And you can kind of make a pile of it and then pull it down to almost simulate the streaking that would happen if over time rain had built up in the center of the streak and then kind of oozed out. And there's actually some, some gritty texture almost inside of this product that really goes a long way to sort of sell the effect. So once again, another excellent offering that really does do what it says it's going to. And it's very effective to pull it down in streaks because that's kind of the way you would sort of see this looking in real life. You just put a put a daub of it into whatever recess you think it originated from and then kind of run it down and it's very easy to get sort of a smooth oily blend with it uh, because of whatever medium that they use to construct it. Okay so next no review of Citadel paint would be complete without talking about the line of shades that they offer. So the most popular of those is probably Nuln Oil. This is a wash, essentially. And it's going to be a very thin 
pigment suspended in medium that you can use to darken the recesses of your models um, or apply it uniformly over the entire model aka wash it and the strength here is we can cover large areas of our model without totally obscuring the undercoat so you can see here as I apply it over even this very light glazed blue that I have it definitely tints it and makes it a darker shade but you can still see the line where the white and the blue separate it's very cleanly preserved because of this product so it's extremely useful Citadel probably offers the highest quality shade amongst any of the paints that we're going to look at today so this really is kind of a must-have and a great product for beginning painters and pro painters alike there's a lot of different applications that this can be used for it has great flow a very nice sort of translucent coverage and it can really do a lot of things for you. They've also got a Reichland flesh shade. You can use that for faces. It's a more of a peach color. And then Agrax Earth Shade, I use it on basing a lot. It falls into the recesses of your bases and really makes like rock and dirt kind of pop out. So all right, so last but not least, we're going to take a look at a contrast paint. So this is Talisar Blue. There's um, maybe around two dozen different varieties of contrast paint at the moment. So this is going to be a high-flowing, highly translucent paint. There's quite a bit of medium here, also quite a bit of pigments. You see that the colors can get pretty rich and saturated, but the main benefit is you're going to be able to lay a good amount of color on your mini without obscuring the detail. You can see the line here between the primers very clearly uh, almost as easily as you could with the with the washes and if you look up you see the opaque paint totally covered it so you're going to be able to preserve those undercoats and the underpainting you've done with contrast paint which can be really useful. The idea sort of behind the Citadel uh, marketing machine is that you can use this paint to quickly paint your model without having to worry about going back in and bringing up the highlights, bringing down the shadows and the shades. It can work in that regard, but it's actually more useful for a lot of other ways. You can kind of accomplish a lot with it that normal paints can't do, that you could really only do with ink. But then again, with ink, if you want to get this kind of flow, you will need to add medium. So it's pretty useful stuff, honestly, um, and one of the better things that you can pick up from Citadel. So, all right, as far as functionality goes, you're going to get a lot out of this technical line. The shades, the contrast paints, pretty much anything in this line that isn't actually a base or a layer paint is going to be very useful for you for whatever purpose you might need, whether it's a special effect like your blood, like your corrosion here. Um, you're going to get a lot of mileage out of that in terms of functionality. Um, so as far as bonus attributes go, I want to kind of rope in the contrast paint line here in addition to the other technical lines. There's really some incredible designs in certain lines within the Citadel brand that are worth picking up. All right, on to Vallejo. So to begin, Vallejo's dropper bottle is a very solid design, kind of often emulated by other lines. It's easy to get measurements of paint that you might want one or two drops, whatever it might be, out of this. And paint doesn't clog in the tip, so it's pretty darn good. Um, as far as range of colors goes, Vallejo has several different lines within their brand. There's model color, game color. They have a model air, specifically formulated for airbrush. There's Vallejo metal color, which is a line of metallic paints. They also have Vallejo mecha color. Uh, they have a line of inks. They have quite a few different products probably more than any other brand we're going to be looking at today. So if there's a color that you're looking for, chances are you can find something close in Vallejo. One thing I will say is that there is a lot of variability across the range. So kind of for every good color you're going to find, you're going to find a couple of bad ones, honestly. So again, having to kind of pick and choose through this massive range is going to be a key theme here. 
Okay, so in terms of opacity, a thing to be aware of with Vallejo is the line is so massive that it's really hard to say on a whole what the opacity of Vallejo paints are because some parts of the line, like the extra opaque colors, are going to cover much better than others. Um, for this example, I'm just looking at a color from the model color line. And I would say coverage is pretty good. It's nothing incredible, but like I said earlier, the extra opaque paints, specifically formulated to cover better, are going to cover better. So kind of a positive and negative together here for Vallejo as far as coverage goes. Some of these paints will cover better than others. So you really have to do some exploration to find out sort of which ones are going to work for your purposes. Um, and that's going to be kind of a reoccurring theme in the Vallejo line is that it's kind of hit and miss. So certain elements within the line will be stronger in certain areas than others. As far as flow goes, this paint actually flows pretty nicely. It's a, a thinner type of medium, so you won't really need to thin it down too much to be able to work with it right onto a model. Some people will like that who uh, are less comfortable with really thinning their paints out and uh, having to work with them a lot. Other people may want some paint that they can stretch out a little bit more, but this paint does flow nice, uh, especially compared to Citadel to the left. I would say Vallejo flows significantly better than Citadel right out of the dropper. And then as far as pigmentation goes, again, such a massive line. For example, the extra opaque paints are going to have quite a bit more pigment in them to play with. Um, but I'm kind of taking it as with all the other categories, on the whole and on average. Um, pigmentation is okay. It's not incredible, and we're going to see as we move down the ranges here that some of these lines of paint really have um, quite extraordinary pigmentation, and Vallejo does not hold up to some of those, but it's not bad. It's, uh, it's comparable to Citadel, I would say. Certain lines in Vallejo I have seen pigment separate as I've tried to work it out um, particularly with like whites and light purples and yellows and things um, some of the paint that's traditionally been harder to work with as you go you can use thinner medium to give yourself a little bit more structure as you try to pull this paint out further um, but pigmentation is not incredible, also not terrible on average for Vallejo. Okay, so finish might be kind of a weak spot for Vallejo. The range is so massive, and because of that, and even within the same line of Vallejo paint, you can find kind of behavior that's a little all over the map with finish. Sometimes uh, paints will dry a little more matte, some will dry a little more satin, and it's kind of hard to predict, so that's a little bit of a weak point for Vallejo. All right, talking about additional types of product other than paint, they have a very nice range of inks. Um, I think there's a dozen different inks. You can get the whole thing for about 24 25 bucks or so, and they are really excellent inks. They're highly pigmented. You can use them to paint directly on your model and go over and preserve kind of the undercoat if you want. You can mix them with other paints. Just a lot of good uses out of these inks, and they're all very solid um, I've used these inks in quite a number of different applications, and they hold up very well. They can be thinned. They can be mixed. They're really good things. So, uh, Vallejo also has a line of metal color, and I forgot to put that in the video, so I'm going to add just a picture of it here. By far the best metallic paints on the market right now, and I've tried quite a few. There's a really good silver, steel, gold, bronze, all essential colors. Sorry, copper. There is no bronze. You can kind of mix yourself into one. But going back to the inks, um, yeah, there, additional types gets a high score for Vallejo. There's really kind of a product for any need you could conceive of here. So uh, they aren't quite as specialized as Citadel's technical line, I would say. And there are a lot of products that kind of cop some of the Citadel line, and maybe they don't do it quite as well. But for example, there's a couple of different types of blood in Vallejo and rust effects, things like that. So good marks for additional types. As far as functionality goes for Vallejo, I would give them high marks as well. We talked about extra opaque earlier. 
Um, so here's a splotch of the extra opaque gray. You can use this to kind of reset uh, any surface that you've already painted on if you want to go back to a, like a neutral color and then start working it again. It's very useful. So like I said earlier, Vallejo is going to have a lot of different offerings and if you know what you're looking for, you can generally find a product to suit you. Um, as far as bonus attributes, again, just a huge range. And not only is it all about the paint with Vallejo, they also make a really nice surface primer that I have used and still use through this through my airbrush to this day. They make a lot of different mediums that all tend to work pretty well. Again, they come in these nice droppers, so good scores for bonus attributes. There's lots of different products here that are useful. All right, so next is scale 75. So the bottle to start with is gonna be very similar to Vallejo's bottle. There are a few differences though. Paint tends to dry in the tip of this bottle a little bit more. And the paint itself also has a tendency to separate from the medium. I know that's not specifically related to the bottle, but in order to get a good mix, you're gonna to wanna to take some tweezers and kind of pluck the end of the bottle off and uh, then put an agitator in there. I use these AK Interactive stainless steel shaker balls, um, one or two, and then if you shake it up, you'll get a much better mix. Uh, so, decent score for the bottle for scale 75. I do like Vallejo's a little bit better just because of the separation issues with the paint. I know that's not really the bottle, but in the fact that they will probably require an agitator. Also, paint dries in the tip a little bit, so you're going to want to keep a paper clip so you can kind of poke a hole through there if you haven't used it in a while. Um, so... As far as the range of colors goes, it's pretty good. It's not as extensive as Vallejo, but I do like a lot of the colors in Scale 75 more, especially the Fantasy and Games line has some very vibrant colors, so good marks there. Um, opacity on Scale 75 is very good. So here I'm kind of showing off like the body of this paint as you squirt it out of the bottle you're going to notice that it, it has more rigidity to it, and that kind of goes along with opacity. It, it's it's going to be a thicker paint coming out of the bottle, which gives it better coverage. You are going to want to thin this, though. But you'll find that even if you do thin it uh, fairly good, it still has some pretty nice opacity. So I tend to use Scale 75 as base paints a lot of the time because of how good the coverage is. So good marks in opacity. Here I'm mixing a little bit of thinner into the paint to show you kind of how it flows. So flow is okay in scale 75. I wouldn't give it the highest marks because the gel medium tends to almost make little rivets. I get little channels in the paint as I as I paint with it. And brush strokes are kind of hard to get rid of with this paint. I, I think Vallejo has probably a little bit better flow than Scale 75. Um, you really do need to know how to work it. So there's a little bit of a learning curve here to get good flow. Um, so flow isn't the best. What I will say though about the paint is that the pigmentation is really good. So you can take this paint and just thin it to the high heavens and it does not break down like you might notice in other paints. You can see on the left some of those Vallejo colors as I kind of worked them out they had a tendency to break down a little bit and uh, thin out and give you kind of visible pieces of pigment. Scale 75 is very workable. I think the medium sort of lends itself to being broken down further um, and there's a little bit more pigment richness here, a little bit more pigment intensity. So there's a lot of pigment. You can really do a lot of things with it. Uh, it tends to be very workable in that regard. The finish is ultra matte. So scale 75 is some of the mattest drying paint that I have, which I consider a real positive. You have a very good control of light with this paint. It's not going to reflect anything that you don't want it to. So really high marks for finish from scale 75. It's, it's pretty much universally matte all across the line. I've never seen a color in this range that dries glossy. And I think it's a testament to the medium that they use. It's, it's pretty unique. 
Additional types gets a little bit of a lower score here for scale 75. You really are mostly just buying paint when you shop this brand. They do have an ink intensity set of inks that features a ink tense wood, it's called. That's a really good ink to use on a Zenithal highlight to make wood, but the rest of the inks, I would tend to prefer the Vallejo ink set. Functionality is good. Like I said, they make a really good base paint. Uh, they cover well. Um, so decent marks in functionality. And then for bonus attributes, I will say the dry time on this paint is actually really good. You can kind of put it down and continue to work it for a very long time. And if you introduce a little bit of thinner medium or water even back into the mix, you can kind of continue to work the paint. So this is paint that's now been sitting on here for quite a while. And you notice I can put water down, I can kind of pull it back a little bit, I can move it around some more. So because of the medium that they use, you get really good drying time with this paint. It makes it really good for wet blending, um, kind of extra manipulation that you can't do with other types of paint. If I had laid down Vallejo or Citadel paint on my palette for this long and continued to try to work it, you would have tide marks galore and it would be very difficult to kind of continue to play with like I can with the scale 75 so uh, the bonus attributes of this paint are, are very desirable in my opinion and I just kind of wanted to circle back and talk about the fantasy and games line inside of scale 75 I actually find the longer I use these paints the more I prefer the fantasy and game to the standard scale 75 has a lot of the same attributes. It's still very matte, has really opaque coverage, but it flows a lot better right out of the bottle. It's almost like they used a little bit of an easier medium to work with. So I'm actually going to rescind my score to an 8 for flow for the Fantasy and Games line. Um, and actually, if somebody asked me for a recommendation on what scale 75 colors to buy, I would say start with Fantasy and Games. It's a shame some of the colors are a little bit maybe more difficult to use. I kind of wish they would uh, bring in some of the normal colors into this medium, but Fantasy and Games is a, a recommendation for me. And here's just a little bit of the ink tense blue so i wanted to show a little bit of the ink intensity set they behave a lot like the vallejo inks but they're more vibrant i would say um almost to the point that it could be a detractor from you considering wanting to use it you can mix it i've had really good success mixing ink tense paint or ink tense ink with normal paint to kind of give increased flow and vibrancy um and you can also add medium to thicken it up. You'll see it has a tendency to pool a little bit, almost like there's some water um, or a lot of an extra bit of water in the medium. But it does flow really good. It's great for freehand work. Um, you can do some really nice things with it, and it preserves kind of the undershading. Um, so it it feels like a thinner version, almost to me, of sort of Citadel's contrast paints. You can kind of get a similar effect with this if you thin it. Uh, and you'll see actually this blue, the coverage that I get over white here and the flow and the smoothness, it kind of rivals that of the contrast paint we used earlier. So it is actually pretty handy stuff, um, the Scale 75 ink intensity set. Uh, and here's just a shot of Citadel's contrast paint that we used earlier. And you'll see it actually looks fairly similar after it's dried to sort of this ink-tense blue we're working with now. So makes me suspect that there is some ink suspended in the contrast medium to actually make the contrast paints. But obviously that's a mad scientist secret, so who knows. But the intensity set is solid, just a aforementioned here in Scale 75's review. All right, so next we have Pro Acryl. So to start, they have a very unique bottle. It almost is reminiscent of kind of Elmer's glue bottles of old. I really like it. It tends to get a little bit of paint at the top, uh, drying on the tip here. And 
you can either squirt past it. You kind of run the risk that you might have a paint flake or two falling in your paint, but I usually just scrape it off with my finger and I kind of chuck it in the garbage. I guess the idea was that you could see the paint actually drying outside of the bottle. Um, I don't know if that's valuable to me or not, but I do like the bottle design. I like the way it's completely sealed. I feel like it keeps my paints nice. So good marks there. As far as the range of colors, a little bit lacking here. I wish they would make more, honestly. There's a decent start here, but not quite as many as I hope to eventually see someday. Um, that being said, though, the evaluation of the range isn't just about how many colors it offers. It's also about what the average quality of the colors are. And I honestly think that... You know, on average, the Pro Acryl colors are the best colors of any paint range that I've seen. Almost every color in this range is extremely captivating. They have a great mahogany. They have a jade color that's very unique and, and beautiful. They have a lot of great whites and off-whites. They have an extremely good red, a very vibrant blue. So just the average quality per color here is really outstanding. You, you can't really go wrong with any of the colors in this range. Next, on opacity, I think it's fantastic. Um, Pro Acryl, one of the first things I think of when I think of Pro Acryl is I think of opacity. It just covers amazingly well. You can see this blue is kind of a similar blue to what we've been using the whole time. The coverage is just phenomenal. It, it really is very opaque paint. It also flows amazingly. I think Pro Acryl has the best flow of any of the paints we're going to be trying today. So I, would, I wouldn't I would hesitate to say best-in-class flow. It's a great base paint because of the opacity. It's also a great layer paint because of the flow. Um, you can thin this very lightly with thinning medium or water, and it behaves incredibly. The opacity is maintained even after thinning it, which is something you definitely don't see in any of the other paints we've tried so far. Um, so here I'm taking a little thinner medium and kind of pulling it out. And you can see, even after it's thinned, this paint is still very opaque. Um, if you want to work in glazes, you really do have to get this thing way down because the pigmentation is actually crazy high for this paint. It really can be stretched quite far and still retain a lot of the pigment, a lot of the vibrancy and saturation. Here I've got even more thinning medium. I'm really going to try to pull the paint out now. It's very cool working with this paint because it doesn't really need the heavy body or the thick consistency that you find in like a scale 75 in order to still flow and still be drawn out. It's a really nice medium to work with. It's it's a very liquid medium. It doesn't have the gel feel of the Scale 75. And because of that, it's really easy to get a good smooth kind of layer, smooth consistency. One thing that frustrates me about painting Scale 75, and if you look over, you can see there's some clear brush strokes from the swatches that I painted out already. With this Pro Acryl, it's very easy to avoid that because of how smooth everything just kind of comes off. As far as finish goes, I would say this dries fairly matte. It's um, not as matte as Scale 75, but the finish is pretty uniform across the line, so all the colors kind of dry to the same finish, um, which I would say is, is, is fairly matte. Um, again, not as matte as Scale 75, but pretty good. For additional types, uh, not much else going on in this range other than the paint. There are some metallics. Again, they are not as good as Vallejo Metal Color, although they are better than some similar um, competitors. Definitely better than the Citadel metallics if you have to use um, the Pro Acryl metallics. They won't do too bad for you, but I certainly would prefer the Vallejo metal color. Uh, functionality of this paint is quite high, I think, just for the actual process of painting. Here's 
their vibrant red that they offer. It's a really good color. And you can get, honestly, more out of one coat of this than just about any other type of paint I can think of. So for your basing and layering needs, which you're going to have to do in the process of painting, this is just incredibly functional paint. It does what it's supposed to do. It covers, it does it smoothly, it does it easily. Um, and I can't argue with that. Bonus attributes. I will say the medium gives you a lot of good workability as well. The drying time is, is very high here. So you can kind of use this for wet blending. You can use it for glazing. Like I said, can be pulled way down. There's a lot of different things you can do with Pro Acryl just because of how solid the, the medium how high the pigment is even tricky colors like orange here you're going to get really good coverage opacity um just an all-around great paint definitely one of the ones i reach for most often and, and first when i'm thinking about what i want to do as far as color schemes and just laying paint on many All right, on to War Colors. My favorite bottle among all the paints I own, I would say, is the War Colors bottle. I'm not sure exactly how they did it, but somehow paint never gets dried and stuck in the tip of this bottle. It sucks back in after you're done squeezing it out. They also tell you how translucent and opaque the paint is right on the front. Uh, it's not always accurate, but I love the fact that they give it a shot, and I wish more paints would kind of do that, um, even though you kind of can tell after you work with them for a while. But great bottle for Pro Acryl, probably best in class, in my opinion. I'm a real big fan. It does take a little bit of pressure to squeeze the paint out. You kind of have to work at it, but it is really great. Some of the colors have agitators that come in it. Some of them don't. Um, I'm not sure how they know, but I've never had any problems with this paint separating anyway. So, uh, really solid bottle. Big fan. Okay, the range of colors with War Colors is really nice. I think they have about 70 or 80 paints in the range, and they're all categorized 1 through 5. So, they kind of suggest to you your, your highlight, your shade, uh, and your shadow colors. And it's really nice to have a kind of a numeric system to show you that. I don't always agree with the categorizations that they've made, but it is cool, and they look cool on the shelf next to each other when you line them up kind of. So good range. Um, opacity of war colors is kind of interesting. I would say the opacity is pretty bad, honestly. And you can see as I spread it out here in sort of the deep grooves where my brush is actually touching the paper. The paint's going to be very transparent and just going to zoom in a little to give you kind of a look here. If you're actually painting with this stuff and you have it thin, it's almost translucent. So opacity is pretty poor really with war colors and it took me a little bit once I got the paint to kind of see the appeal of using it, it can be very frustrating if you're going to use this paint as a base paint or even a layer paint. It's not the best, honestly, as far as opacity, even the ones labeled more opaque. Um, the flow is good. You have to get some water in there, some thinner medium in order to get it to start flowing. You see now I put a little thinner medium in and you'll see that gel medium broke down a little bit. Uh, some people do compare this medium to scale 75. I think it flows quite a bit better than scale 75. Um, the brush strokes do start to vanish once you introduce thinner. And it's a bit smoother, I think, to kind of wield this paint. Um, 
So Flow is is better than Scale 75. It's not nearly as good as Pro Acryl, but the Flow is good. I, I like it. You do have to thin it in order to get there, but it works okay. Pigmentation is also good. I think War Colors holds up to thinning really well, and that makes it kind of good as a glaze paint. And I think that's really where War Colors lives. It because of the lack of opacity, because of the transparency, see, you can see right through it almost. It works really good as a glaze, as a tint, and that's really the strength of war colors. If you are into glaze painting, you want to preserve that, that undercoat um, and kind of build up color over repeated layers, this is going to be really good paint for that. The working time is great here. I'll uh, talk about that a little bit later as well, but you see I can take, I can go right over those tide marks that I had earlier and kind of rip them back off the paper. So that medium does give you quite a bit of time. Um, as far as finish, it's going to finish fairly matte. I would say it's comparable to Pro Acryl. Um, additional types, I would also give good scores. So here's one of the bottles of their glaze medium or sorry, glaze paint. They have uh, six different paints that are listed as glaze that are supposedly even more transparent than the normal line. So here I'm just pulling some of that blue out. But because you get the great labeling on the bottle that shows you the opacity, you have the glaze medium line. They also have a line of inks that they offer. And another line specifically designed for coverage as well. There's really a lot of good offerings here for additional types and, and different types of paint created sort of to suit your needs within the line. I do think that the heart of the line lies in its ability to glaze for you. And honestly, I'm going to go on to functionality and say... Functionality is really good if you're buying these to glaze. Um, here's a semi-opaque red to take a look at that. If you're buying them to glaze and you know that's what you want to get out of them, I think this is a great line for you. If you're buying this as a base paint, as maybe a, a layer paint that you want to get away with one or two coats, it's really not, it's going to fall apart for you. And it did for me right away. This was one of the first lines that I really went all out on, and I was kind of disappointed. I, I didn't use them as much. Now, the more I paint, the more I kind of come back to them because I find myself being more drawn to this sort of glazing style and the building up of color and interesting... Uh, interesting variation over the application of several thin layers. So as long as you know what you're getting into this line for, I think you'll be very happy with the results that you can get. Um, bonus attributes, like I said, the, the workability is really good on this. The dry time is really slow. You can come back to the old paint. Um, it is comparable to Pro Acryl in terms of sort of that drying time and workability, I would say. So good marks for bonus attributes. They do have a line of inks I mentioned briefly. Uh, I haven't gotten too much use out of them. They're very almost watered down. They, they almost seem like they're designed to be added to other paints, I would say, which makes it kind of tricky to use them. Uh, I haven't gotten much use out of the ink, so I would I would steer clear of the inks, honestly. But all right, next is Chimera. Uh, the bottle's okay. I like them because they're big. You get a lot of paint in them. And it also lists the pigment on the back, which is kind of interesting. These paints are unique in that there's only one pigment per paint, hence they're called the Pure Pigment Set. There's a lot of P's there. I hope I didn't pop in my P's for you. I do notice that paint tends to dry up in the tip of the bottle, which is kind of frustrating. Sometimes you have to pick it out of the way or you're going to get little chips that might fall into your paint. But 
Overall, the bottle's okay. It's not amazing. It's not terrible. One thing I will say, too, is when you squirt paint out of this bottle, it can be hard to measure it. It doesn't really drop out like it does with uh, other bottles. I don't know if that's more the paint or the bottle itself because this paint is very thick. And here you can see I actually did get a little piece of dried paint in my paint that I'm going to have to pick out now. As far as range of colors goes, there's only 13 of them. So that's kind of a drawback here, kind of the main drawback with Chimera. You are very limited. Now they do mix well because they are limited in pigment, but the range is very bad. Opacity, on the other hand, is about the best of any acrylic paint I've ever seen. These paints will cover amazingly. Uh, I would compare them to sort of the extra opaque line from Vallejo that we looked at earlier, except this opacity is going to be very constant across the entire range for Chimera. So extremely opaque paint, very nice in that regard. Flow is also very nice. Interestingly enough, painting with Chimera feels like painting with an oil paint. I'm not sure what sort of magic juju they have going on in their medium, but this paint is really incredible to work with. It it feels like I'm painting with oils. It's very smooth uh, and very enjoyable as far as flow. The pigment is crazy rich, so you can see here I'm sort of thinning the paint out. And with just a little bit of thinner, I can take this incredibly thick, uh, heavier bodied paint and I can pull it out and now it's going to behave almost like a Vallejo or sort of one of my thinner paints. We can We can work with it because the pigment density is so high. And you'll see, too, going back to flow and smoothness, There's, it's very easy to minimize brush strokes while working with this paint. Because of how smooth it flows, how thick the pigment is, just everything about it, it kind of feels a cut above all the other paint we've looked at today. Um, this is the white by Chimera. Happens to be my favorite white at the moment. There's another piece of paint, so it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. So yeah, you can see there's quite a bit of paint dried in the cap there. Um, and I haven't been using this paint a terribly long time yet, so maybe I'll develop some better strategies for dealing with that dried paint in the cap. If anyone knows any, please let me know in the comments. But see there, you can see I'm squeezing it out. It's not coming out in, in drops or any sort of measurable way, so that's kind of another detractor from the, the bottle or the design. But like I said, maybe it's the paint itself, but look at how smooth this paint sort of draws out and white notoriously is very chalky. Now I can take it and I can mix it with this blue which because of the nature of this medium is still very workable. It's uh, it's quite incredible and, and, and easy to kind of to kind of mix this paint in a style that you would like traditional oil paints. Uh, this paint dries very matte it also comes with a bottle of satin medium if you want to change the finish of the paint. But I've noticed across the range it's it's a uniform matte drying. Now if you zoom in here you can really see how interesting of a result we get by mixing these two colors. And that's one thing I'll say about Chimera. Um, additional types score is going to be pretty low because all they really do offer is paint in that category I sort of concocted to evaluate other things offered by the line. This line is really, it's just paint. There's nothing else. Uh, there is the satin medium, but other than that I'm not aware of any other products that they do offer. Um, as far as functionality goes, I think the whole idea of this paint for me is to mix it. That's where it shines. Here's a warm yellow. I'm going to introduce a little bit of that. But I just want to show you, you can kind of grab any colors in this range and mix them and be confident that you're going to get an interesting result. Um, I think the nature of the paint itself, that it's, that it's one pigment and pure pigments, means that when you do mix them, you're always going to get something kind of interesting. So here's the white and the yellow taking the yellow into the blue to make an interesting uh, 
green shade. And I can do this. It, it feels very addictive to me once I start smearing this paint around. And again, because the drying time is so good on a wet palette especially, you can, you can just play with this paint forever. And even on your model, you can mix, kind of push paint around and get really interesting smooth blends in such an easy fashion. And almost has a the paint almost has a body to it while you're using it to uh, almost an an impesto style. Um, I would say it's kind of comparable to scale seventy five in the way that it has that volume, but it's a lot smoother when you're using it. So you can see over here with scale, I, I also had a little bit of volume, and you can see those brush strokes, um, but it's not appealing like it is with the chimera i i can't really explain it in words you almost have to feel it it's the way the paint feels is very unique um as far as functionality i think again for mixing if what you want to do is mix paint this is going to be the best paint that you can possibly buy for that just because of the the pure pigments uh, and then last is bonus attributes. So the fact that they are one pigment, great for mixing. Um, incredible drying time. Really, as far as if you want to build yourself a custom color, I think these paints are great. They come with a chart. Uh, I'm not showing it here, but it does kind of give you a guide as to how you can get to certain colors by mixing and it's very interesting so I'm just working the red into the yellow a little bit you can see the opacity is so high that you're gonna have really good coverage even with a trouble color like red and honestly I hate to say it because I really love the pro acryl red and how vibrant it is but this chimera red is um, probably the most vibrant and just straight up gorgeous red that I have. And like I said, if you want to alter the shade, you can introduce a little bit of white in there to brighten it up. You can hit it with some of that yellow to pull it more towards orange. Um, so very, very good marks for Chimera. All right, next up is P3, which of course stands for Persistence, Penetration, and Perpetual Mode. I don't know what it stands for. Um, starting off with the bottle. I like the bottle. It's not bad, honestly. If you really have to paint out of the pot, I think it's much preferable to the Citadel bottle. Uh, paint doesn't tend to dry around the rim as much, and... It's a little bit easier to get it off of this uh, little lip that they have built in there. It's easier to seal, and you get more paint in the bottle. So higher marks for the bottle. I still like a dropper better, but it's not bad. Range of colors is good. They don't have quite as robust a line as you'll get with a Vallejo or even a Citadel, but um, there are a lot of colors here, and they're kind of analogous to the Citadel range. As far as opacity goes... Again, like with a Vallejo, it's a little hit and miss, so there are certain colors in the range that cover better than others, from my experience, but uh, I would say it's on par with a, a Vallejo. Uh, flow is pretty good. I think it's better than a Citadel paint as far as flow. Maybe not quite as good as Vallejo, so here's some of the Gnarls Green with Flow Improver in it. Uh, sorry, not flow improver. This is thinning medium. So it, it does need a little bit of thinning to really get the most out of it as far as flow goes. One thing I do notice with this paint is it tends to dry fairly quick, which can be a good thing if you want to lay down layers and continue to work quickly, but can be a bad thing if what you're after is wet blending uh, and working kind of on the model moving paint around. I would say this isn't the best paint for that. It thins okay. 
really compared to the few paints we've seen previous, it's going to fall a little short in that category. But again, comparable to like your Vallejo um, or a Citadel as far as thinning. This paint is already fairly thin out of the pot, so there isn't a whole lot of workability here. Uh, as far as finish, a little bit all over the board. It's going to dry in a sort of light matte um, to light satin finish, kind of right in the middle of the spectrum, I would say. And like I said before, some colors are going to behave a little differently than others. So, um, As far as additional types, there are several different kinds of this paint. You have a uh, a base range that's going to have more opacity, going to be a little thicker to use. They also have a really nice armor wash that I've used before. Um, I've gotten a little mileage out of. So there are some technical offerings here. I would say most of the products pale in comparison to some of the offerings from like a Citadel as far as their technical paints, but there is a nice range here, so not too bad. Um, Functionality, I'm going to give them a little bit of a lower score because I'm not honestly sure what P3 does better than other brands. It's a good paint. It's I can't really knock it too bad, but there's really nothing exceptional about it either. Um, and then bonus attributes, kind of in the same boat. Uh, I would say maybe the fast drying time is something that you could make use of just to kind of work quickly this this paint does allow you to kind of get some speed on your models because it really does dry pretty quick um, so that's p3 it's it's good paint there really isn't a whole lot that i can say about it that's terribly special but All right, on to Reaper Paints. As far as bottle goes, this is Vallejo's bottle, identically. So see the score for Vallejo to see what kind of score I give the bottle. Uh, the range is nice. There's two main kinds. You get your HD Master Series, it's called, and the regular Master Series. So the HD supposedly has more pigment density. It's called high-density pigment for that paint than you would get in the normal range. So I'm just spreading some of the the normal purple out here. Now I'm going to go for some of that HD. You do want to shake the HD a little more than the normal because the pigment has more of a tendency to separate from the medium with this paint. There is a really nice range of colors with Reaper, I will say. It's not quite as robust as Vallejo is offering, but I would say on par with the Citadel as far as the amount of colors they have, at least in the racks in my local store. I can definitely tell you that Reaper has tons of colors, so pretty much anything that you could want you can find in this range. Opacity is a little bit all over the map. Even in the HD range, which is in theory more opaque than the normal range, I do run into colors that have a hard time covering. And it's often kind of a toss-up when you look at the bottle to try and figure out exactly what kind of behavior you're going to get when you spread this paint out. So opacity is a little hit and miss. Flow is kind of in the same boat. You can see as I pull this orange apart here, oh, there's a little bit in there. The medium kind of suspends itself and the brush strokes are very apparent for me. It almost feels like a poor man's scale 75 as far as the medium goes. So I tend to not like to see very heavy and obvious brush strokes when I work on a mini. And you can knock that down with some good blends of thinner or water, but I also like to have paint that doesn't make me work for that. So a little bit lower scores in flow. Also in pigmentation, so this is the HD paint range. It should, in theory, be more pigmented, but 
pigmentation kind of tends to be all over the map with this paint. Finish, however, is good. You're always going to get a pretty matte finish with Reaper paints, and I really like that about it. Also, Additional Types gets a good score for me. They basically have a lot of the same offerings that Vallejo has. So you're going to get, uh, like, they have a really good flow improver that I do use. They have a nice thinning medium uh, varnish that comes in the same bottle. So Additional Types are good. Functionality... I'm not sure this paint range does anything better than any other range, and the same for bonus attributes. There really isn't a lot of special characteristics that this range can offer that others can't. Here you see me really thinning that orange out, and now the pigment's almost broken down to the point where it's a different color. So, yeah... I'm not wild about this paint, but it's not bad. It's very usable if it's all you can get. All right, the next line I'm going to review is not actually paint, it's ink. And this is going to be Dollar Rowney FW ink. So they come in a glass dropper bottle, essentially. Uh, I really like it. There's a, there's a dropper in there that's going to allow you to sort of squeeze out exactly how much you want. Uh, very good marks for the bottle. The range is great. Here's the Dollar Rowney White. There's about 30, 40 different colors of these inks, and they're all very solid, very nice colors. Uh, there really isn't a, a, a loser among them, so I'm going to give the range good marks as well. Um, as far as opacity goes, so I'm going to kind of compare these to the other inks that we've looked at today a little bit. I would say these are the most opaque inks in my collection. They have fantastic coverage for inks. They're just so rich and saturated. Now you can pull them out very thin, but you can also kind of paint with them right out of the pot if you want really good opacity. So they're very versatile in that regard. Flow, these are inks, so kind of meant to be used with pens um, in other sort of forms of art. You can really you can do a lot of different things with these, and the flow is amazing. It It's really hard to compare this to standard acrylic paint because of how easy it is. It's just when you start, you get some on your brush, you just want to draw lines because of how smooth it flows and how quick and easy it uh, sort of jumps off your brush onto the page. You can paint very fine lines with this. It's great for freehand because of the flow. So great marks for flow. The pigmentation on these inks is absolutely incredible so you can see here you get almost paint like coverage if you go straight out of the pot with it but it does also have sort of a transparent characteristic that's um, kind of reminiscent of other kinds of ink so pigmentation is really good with these inks uh, as far as finish goes they do dry matte um, I've never had any issues with uh, any gloss or satin effects from the finish here. So good marks in finish. Um, and then as far as additional types goes, this is there is a pearlescent line. I haven't tried it yet, but I wouldn't really use these for any other purpose than uh, what you might use another ink for. So here's me drawing the white out. And you can see how just incredible it kind of gives you a smooth transition as it as it voids your brush as you kind of run out of it it's really gonna have a unique effect kind of when you pull this out you can see you almost get a gradient here so very unique characteristics in using inks that you really lose when you try to go with acrylic and you can mix these together you see I'm mixing it here with the blue to get kind of a almost a sky blue color. They do dry fairly quickly. So you can see I've already got little dry spots under there, which um, can be good or bad, depending on what you're trying to do with them. 
functionality is good if you're looking for some of the things that ink does. Of course, you can mix this with acrylic paint to increase flow or saturation. You can use this out of an airbrush to kind of preserve the undercoat, the white. I love to use in a in a zenithal highlighting capacity. It's my go-to, the Dollarani FW White. I think it should pretty much be on every table for its airbrush ability. Uh, and then bonus attributes for the Dollarani ink. I would say just the saturation, um, the ability to mix it with other paints, the flow. There's a lot of really unique characteristics to this ink that you might not find elsewhere, so really good stuff. All right, Scale Color Artist now. This is uh, comes in the same tube that the Abtalung, which we'll review next, comes in, but it's going to be a tube like a lot of oil paints. I actually really like the tube. I didn't know how I'd feel about it when I first started using it, but I am a fan. Paint tends to not separate in it. It's uh, it's pretty easy to get just a little a little bit out. Sometimes I, I have certain bottles where it's kind of hard to get a small amount actually out of them. But I am a fan of these tubes. I, I really do like them. The range of colors here is pretty good. It's not a huge range, but I feel like they've added more colors since the line initially came out. I uh, haven't exactly counted all of them, but I've been on the website and browsed around. I own about 15, 20 of these myself. So the range is good. Uh, opacity is also very good. So this is the thickest sort of heavy body acrylic paint that I own. I think there are some thicker ones, but I believe as far as the acrylic paint specifically de designed for miniature use, this is going to be about the thickest you can get. And it's really nice and opaque because of it, um, especially right out of the bottle. So here I've got a little bit of water now to sort of thin this out. So it will thin out nice. Uh, part of that is because of how thick it is. You can really pull this paint out uh, very well. I like that about it. It also flows pretty nice. It's not perfect. You do see there's a little bit of brush strokes. And as you actually continue to work with it, the pigment does start to separate a little sooner than I guess I would like. But it's certainly better than like a P3, a Reaper, maybe a comparable to a scale 75 as far as the pigmentation and how far you can pull this paint out. There is quite a bit of pigment here for you to work with. Um, and the flow is pretty good. Like I said, it's not perfect. It seems to get a little gritty to me as you work sort of super far down but it's not bad. The finish is very matte. Not quite as matte as scale 75, but almost that matte. It's, it's quite nice as far as finish goes. There really isn't any additional types to speak of in this range. So far it's just paint. So this is a scale 75 product. I wanted to separate them in this review from scale 75 and fantasy games lines within scale because it just feels like such a different product to me, this heavy body acrylic paint. Um, so for additional types, this is pretty much all that's going to be in this line. Functionality here is pretty nice. It's a very nice base and layer paint because of the, the good opacity, um, its ability to thin. It actually has a really nice working time as well. The sort of thickness of it and the medium kind of lets you continue to work with it for quite a while. So here I've got this thinned out portion of it that I'm still kind of manipulating around. You don't see any tide marks yet um, from drying ridges within the paint. So works nice. And now you can see it's it's got a really good flow even down to this thinness. So almost if you look to the left with the Dollarani ink that I love the flow of, you can see we can make pretty similar lines here. Uh, at the tail end. So really good, really good stuff in terms of functionality and uh, bonus attributes.
All right, on to Optilung 502. So this comes in the exact same tube as the Scale Color Artist, although it is oil paint. So maybe it's a little more suited to that. I don't know. It squeezes out a little better. I know that much, probably because it's oil. I got to confess, I feel pretty amazing when I pinch some of this out. When I pinch one out of this, uh, feels really good. I feel like I'm a legit artist, and I can't quite explain it other than the way that it kind of holds up when you put a little dab of it down. It's really going to hold its body, uh, its firmness. It has like a like a structure to it, so here I am grabbing a specific brush for it. I am going to give good rating to the bottle, though. Range of colors is really nice here. I think there's more than uh, the Scale Color Artist in terms of range. Um, maybe about 40, so, and they're all really nice colors, too. Really good pigments. Uh, I'm just going to zoom in a little here while I pull this out. So you can see it's just, it's like goo. There's almost like a goo here, and it literally sticks on your brush. So now as I'm pulling it out, so this is oil paint. Um, this is the big leagues, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll tell you what, you can really tell that you're working with something else here when you look at the coverage because it is insanely opaque. I mean, you can't see through this at all. It's solid. It is a solid brick of color that we're laying down here, uh, which is really one of the benefits with oil paint. It's extremely opaque. It also is very creamy and smooth in terms of flow. Uh, it's almost like you're painting with Crisco or something. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of mineral spirits here, which is what you need to use to thin oil. Just to show you what happens when we thin it. So I didn't even go back to the paint. I'm just using what was on my brush. And you can see that the flow of this is really quite remarkable it it's so smooth and you can see that there's brush strokes here but they're they're not undesirable like they are with some of the paints we've tried today it's almost kind of a pleasant byproduct of working with such a great medium um, the flow is comparable to some of the inks that we've used today so I can really do some cool things with sort of squiggles and increased or decreased pressure on the palette. Um, and then you see as I kind of feather this out where we have more thick paint, we're going to get more thick color and we're going to get a really nice gradient between the two. So the pigmentation is incredible. It really can be pulled out, can be prodded, poked and prodded and moved around. Here I'm going to take a little bit of their white, which I really like as well, and uh, show you guys what these look like when you mix. So blending with oil paints is really going to be a, a strong suit here. And because you have the working time of literally a couple of days, you can really take your time with this. Yeah, so you can see the, the paint just kind of goes together and becomes a new thing here. So... It's very fascinating to, to play with this. And definitely suited to a palette, you're going to have more success on a larger miniature or a larger surface area, like if you're painting a shield or a big exposed belly, something like that. I think this paint really is going to do some wonders for you in terms of getting a nice interesting gradient in your, in your shading. It does dry matte. I've uh, once it eventually does dry. I've tried a few different colors and I've had really good finish on all of them. It's not quite as matte as some of the acrylics that we looked at today, but it's definitely in the in the matte range of finish. And as far as additional types, there's really only oil paint offered in this line, so not a lot to speak of there. Uh, functionality is really good. It 
is maybe hindered by the fact that you are going to need kind of a new set of tools, a dedicated set of tools to use oil paints. You're going to need mineral spirits. You're not going to be able to use your red games or your red grass wet palette or your Masterson wet palette with this. You're going to need uh, a dedicated palette. I actually use a piece of porcelain tile and I spread it out on it. But you can use cardboard. I've seen people use uh, construction paper, just like a thick uh, poster board underneath. You can lay down a new piece of paper. There's a lot of things you can really use for a palette with these because they stay wet so long that you don't you don't need a wet palette to work with them. So that's kind of an advantage. But on the downside, you see, I just threw my brush in the garbage because I didn't bother to clean it. I don't paint with oils very often because there is a little bit of a not necessarily a learning curve to using them but some difficulty with um, having the dedicated tools is kind of painful one of the bonus attributes I will say that kind of counters the drying time is the ability to pull the paint back off the mini and you can do this with oil based washes you can also do it with just your base and your layer paints if that's the effect you're going for but you'll see here I put a little bit of mineral spirits in the middle of just my towel and I can go back over this thick layer of paint that I laid down and pull basically a hundred percent of it off and if I kept going I could get right back down to the primer and pretty much erase any trace of oil paints you can use things like q-tips or special tools to obviously get even more creative with this um, than I was in this example but there's lots of different applications that you can kinda go through so here I'm using a q-tip and I'm gonna kinda almost just draw where I want the paint to go away and you'll see it pulls pretty much right down to the primer you'll see it actually is pulling a little bit of the primer up too so one thing you might want to think about before you try this, if you're going to be really aggressive with it like I am here, is you might want to lay down a coat of varnish in between the layers just to protect your undercoat from potentially being pulled up by uh, being worked heavily with the, with the mineral spirits and whatever tools you use. All right, what do I think? Well, I think every paint really has its place. Um, some of them are better than others. Some of them are fantastic. My favorite paint, as far as a, a base and layer paint out of everything we looked at today, I'm gonna have to go with Pro Acryl. I would say Pro Acryl wins by a nose for basing and layering over Chimera. And strictly because Proacryl has more offerings in the line. So I can pretty much get most of the colors I'm looking for with Proacryl. Um, with Chimera, I have to mix them. Now, you can mix any color you can think of with Chimera, but if you're batch painting, if you're painting a whole army, you might not want to do that. So Proacryl is going to get you there a lot quicker and it'll be the kind of thing where if I know I want a certain shade of purple, I might have it in Pro Acryl and I don't want to mix it with Chimera, which um, doesn't happen to feature a purple in their basic line, so I'd have to make it myself. That being said, if one of the colors that I want happens to be in Chimera's line or I'm not batch painting, or painting a sort of a hero model, or maybe it's okay with me to mix my paint and um, have to do that every time I want to paint the same pattern over and over again. Chimera is, I think, the best paint on this board. It's just fantastic. It behaves a lot like oils. You get great working time. You get great flow. Um, it's just out of sight. Um, that being said, since the line is more limited, I like to have Pro Acryl as well. Between these two, I got my basing and my layering covered. Uh, for glazes, you really can't beat war colors. All of the paint can kind of thin down into that um, 
contrasty kind of inky translucent uh, coverage that you would want for a lot of glazes. Now I think there's still a place for contrast paints in your collection because they're so quick and easy and effective at what they do, especially with the Zenithal undercoat. Um, the other thing I'll say is that the Citadel technical paints, uh, like your Typhus Corrosion, your Blood for the Blood God, they offer something you really don't get in any of the other lines. Now you could, you could paint something that looks a lot like Typhus Corrosion if you worked at it, but why work at it when you can just get a bottle of it and have it be dependable there all the time. So Citadel's technical paints are great. The, um, the shades are fantastic. Um, like for a wash, they have glazes that are really nice. So that I would say about them. Uh, Vallejo also has a couple paints that I would say I would highly recommend you pick up for specific purposes. One, the extra opaque like if you wanted a nice gray for a reset color, the extra opaque um, line is really nice. And then, I don't know if I mentioned it or not in the review, but the metal, uh, the metal colors by Vallejo are the best metallic paints on the market, bar none. I've tried quite a few. Nothing really comes close. Um, they're just outstanding. Uh, scale 75. When I started painting, they had a real good place in my collection. I still think the Fantasy and Games line is very nice just because they have a lot of unique colors that you might not be able to get in Pro Acryl. Definitely won't be able to get in Chimera. So if you want to pick up some of these for unique colors, I would say that's a good thing to do. Um, do you need the base scale 75 line? Uh, if it's the only thing you can get in your store, it's a fine paint. You can do almost anything with it. It dries very mad. It's very opaque. The flow isn't the best for my money and it takes a little work to get it to where you need to. I think it's easier to paint with the fantasy and games line a little bit, um, just because the flow is a little better right out of the pot, but the scale color line is fine. Um, I'm not as wild about them as I was when I first used them because I'd never seen a gel medium type of thing before. Uh, Pro Acryl, best paint on the board. I'll, I'll, I obviously said that already. War Colors is nice. Um, can be frustrating if you're trying to base or layer paint with them because you're not going to get the opacity that you maybe hope for. But if you know that going in and you want to use them as a glaze, they're fantastic. Chimera we talked about already, amazing. Only 13 colors, it's the only weakness I could say about them. I wish every paint had this kind of dry time. I don't understand why we can't get other acrylic paints to have the workability that you get here. Is it because of the pigment? What kind of medium are they using? I don't understand it. I love it, it's beautiful, it's strange and beautiful. Um, yeah, I wish, I, wish, I wish everyone had this medium and used it more because it's fantastic. Uh, P3 is good. I would say P3 and uh, P3 Reaper and Vallejo all kind of feel like maybe they're made in the same factory. I don't know. Um, if you want to paint out of the pot, if you have to, I would say you're better off getting P3 bases and layers than Citadel. Um, because the pots are better. I, I really like the pots better. Uh, and I actually like the paint a little bit better too. Citadel's base and layer paint, I just, I'm not a huge fan of. I know some people do amazing things with it. It's whatever. It's not for me. Um, and it's twice the price of everything else. So I don't quite understand it. P3, if you want to paint out of the pot, I would say strongly give them a try. Reaper to me feels a lot like Vallejo. Um, if I had to pick one, I maybe would give the edge to Reaper, especially if you get the HD line. I'm a big fan of that. Um, good paints, Reaper, and, and some very nice colors, too. Uh, Dollarani, they make really nice inks. Um, pick up the white, pick up the Payne's Gray, which is essentially black with a little bit of blue in it. Get other colors if you want to, although I will say I have about a dozen of them and I don't use the rest very much. Occasionally I'll spray them through the airbrush. They, they spray really nice through the airbrush. You get uh, really good coverage while still retaining that translucent uh, pigment and they flow really nice off the brush too. So good stuff with Dollarani, highly recommended. Um, scale color artists. So these are going to, uh, I'm not sure what the place is for these. I would say if you, if you love Chimera, 
you want all your paint to kind of feel and behave like that, give you that real thick, almost oil-like punch, you might want to look into Scale Color Artists because they feel a lot like Chimera. Um, they don't, they're not quite as good, I don't think, but they're not too far behind. Um, I don't think they flow quite as nice. The pigment is a little bit thicker. Um, and you can kind of see like there's uh, some brush strokeage here. Uh, they take a little bit of work. I would almost say they're, they're, they feel like scale 75 in that in order to really get great results with them, you need to work with them a lot and kind of figure out, you know, okay, here's how I need to work with them or what specific medium works the best. Uh, to get good effects out of these. But they're super pigment heavy. You can stretch them out a long way. They're very solid. And I really actually, the more I use these um, these tubes, the more I really like them. They're, they're I guess I'm kind of uh, contradicting myself because I sort of complained with Citadel that you couldn't get a good measurement of what your paint was to your thinner. But I don't know why these tubes, they make me feel like I'm uh, Bob Ross or something. So. I am a fan of the tubes. They make me, uh, they make me feel special. Um, Optolung 502, uh, I haven't really compared these to other oil paints. I can't say much about them. Um, in my sort of game plan for oils, I kind of use them more as a wash than anything because you can wash over armor, uh, true metallic armor, without knocking the shine out of it. And it's easy to do this uh, reductive technique where you pull it back off. And I really like that. I think that's super cool. Um, I hate the fact that it takes days to dry. It's probably why I only use them for a wash because I can kind of make that be the last step or one of the last steps of my model. And then I'm okay setting them aside for a few days because uh, I kind of feel like I'm done with them at that point. Um, I would like to work with oils more in the future because I like some of their properties, but um, I get it from acrylic paint a little bit too. And um, I mean, you can blend Chimera paint pretty stinking easily. A lot of people rave about how great it is to blend uh, Optolong 502, but if you move reasonably fast, you can uh, blend Chimera pretty similarly. So that's my range of paints. Um, Procryl, Chimera. Procryl's my favorite. Chimera's up there. War Colors, Citadel Technical Paints, Vallejo for Metal. Yeah, you're well off. Um, shades and Contrast Paints for Citadel. Technical for anything you need. Vallejo for the, uh, maybe pick up an opaque gray. Very useful. Uh, Vallejo Metal Color. Scale 75 you don't really need unless you want the Fantasy and Games colors. Some of them, this Arbuckle's Brown. Man, that looks good. It's really almost purple, but fantastic the ink intensity sets really nice the ink tense woods actually really good you can get a really nice looking wood effect over a zenithal with that pro acryl best paint on the market i think great coverage great color selection not amazing color selection but enough you know war colors for glazing chimera obviously i think that's a no-brainer and everyone should own these paints they're so good i wish they would make more honestly um b3 and reaper meh dollarani pick up black and white Scale Color Artist, if you want, I'd say try one. Um, and then Abtalung 502 if you want to experiment with oils, a good start. So that's it. That's it for my paint review. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to go into detail about any of these more or if you have any questions, um, I'll answer them. I love paint. Uh, I'm probably going to keep buying more uh, as long as I can find room on my shelves because it's all very interesting to me. So. There you go.